morning, before we even dive into our uh, topic, let me ask you, how many of you can say that you are a disciple of Jesus? Amen. Can I see a raise of hand? Okay. Why, why, why is it that some of you can't uh, raise it too high? You, you're not sure? You're not sure whether you're going to raise up? Or... This is not a trick question, okay? Are you a disciple of Jesus? That's the question, okay? And I ask that question because that is what we'll talk about this morning, okay? We'll just um, try to pause and study this because this is very important. As you all know, that's our um, mission in this church, in CCF. That is to make Christ-committed followers who will make Christ-committed followers. That is the great commission that Jesus has given us. But we have to first check whether we are also disciples of Jesus. You know why? Because you won't be able to make disciples if you yourselves are not a disciple. Are you guys following me? If you don't know what a true disciple looks like, then most likely you will have a hard time discipling others. Because it's also not clear for you. And so let me just raise that a bit higher. Okay? Are you an authentic disciple of Jesus? Because you would agree with me, there are a lot of people who would say, oh, I'm, a, I'm a disciple of Jesus. But truth be told, their life is not in sync with what they proclaim. That they are only disciples of Jesus in as much as that it would not conflict with their own desires, with their own goals in life. Oh, if it becomes uncomfortable, we just forget about it. Oh, but if it's nice, you know, it's cozy and, and nice church and those things with nice seats, and then probably I could think of being a disciple of Jesus. But what is a true, what is an authentic disciple of Jesus? And that's going to be our topic this morning. Authentic discipleship. And we're going to read from Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 19. This is a familiar verse. And before we dive into our study, let's let's pray and commit this time to the Lord. Okay? Let's, let's bow our heads. Lord Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Lord, what a blessing that is, Lord, that we can come together, we can sing praises to your name, Lord. That we can be with our brothers and sisters uh, who encourage us, who pray for us, Lord, who care for us, who love us, and spur us, Lord God, to live our lives that would bless you. Live our lives that we can be authentic disciples of you, Lord. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that you would bless this time. Bless our study as we read your word, Lord God, we pray that you will be the one to speak, Lord God. Not me. I don't have much to say, Lord God. And whatever I say doesn't really count. What counts, Lord God, is what you say. Yes. What you think. What you feel. And so, Father, we pray that everything, Lord God, that we will learn this morning will glorify you will transform us and will bring glory and honor to your name alone, Lord. Not anyone else, not even this church, Lord God, but your name will be lifted up. You deserve it, Lord God. And so, Lord, we pray that you would prepare our hearts, remove the distractions from our mind, Lord God, so that we can focus, we can study your word faithfully. This we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people will say, Amen. amen in amen. All right, authentic discipleship. Let's just say that you are God. Okay, this is just an example, okay? Let's say you are God and you are given 
Well, of course, if you're God, you can do anything, right? And you have that decision whether how you would be able to make yourself known to your creation. How would you do it? How would you do it? If you will introduce, you will make impact, you will let your name or yourself be known to the people, how would you do it? You would think probably, oh, I'll just speak out from heaven and say, Hi, humanity. I'm God. Worship me. You could do that. Or you could send angels, multiple uh, or multitude of angels, and that would proclaim your word. Do you think that would be something that people will believe in, will get to know God? But did, God didn't do that, did He? God chose men, and that's you and me, so that He can be known by your family, by your friends, by your office mates, by your, even those who don't like you. God chose people like us so that He can make himself known. And I submit to you, that is authentic discipleship. How Jesus introduced himself, how we can bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because you, you would agree with me, there are a lot of things, there, 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 there would be a lot of ideas who Jesus Christ is. But the main way that Jesus Christ would well, made that way so that he would impact the world is through men. Imperfect people. Just like you and me. Interestingly, God chooses us instead of wonders and miracles to share God's word. And so the, the thing that we have to remember is that are we authentic? Are we authentic? Authentic discipleship, that's what we're going to talk about. You see, none of us, as I think about this, none of us wants to be phonies. None of us wants to be fake. Anyone here wants to be fake? Most especially when we talk about our faith, right? We want our faith to be authentic. It should be genuine. It should be real. None of us wants to be marked that way. And so this is very important. Amen? We want to be authentic people, not putting on an act. We are not called to be actors and actresses to convince people. God calls us to be authentic. God calls us to be authentic. It's, it's not you come up with a title. It's not that. You, you can have a title, but that doesn't change the fact whether you are real or not. You can come up with nice slogans. It doesn't change the fact whether you are an authentic follower of Jesus. And so I want you to open your Bibles um, in Mark chapter 3. And we're going to read from verses 13 to 9 13 to 19 13 to 19 and let's read it together and he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired and they came to him and he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles so that they might be with him and he might send them to preach and to have authority to cast out demons. He appointed, he appointed the twelve, Simon, whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonergus, that is sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip 
in Bartholomew, in Matthew, in Thomas, in James, the son of Alphaeus, in Thaddeus, in Simon the Zealot, in Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Who betrayed him. This is something that we are familiar with. This is when Jesus Christ called out the disciples. He picked out the twelve disciples. Isn't it interesting that out of those whom Jesus had picked, there was one who was a phony. Yes. And not just a phony, it's not just fake, but he's, he would later betray Jesus for money. He would later deny and betray Jesus. This morning, there are five things that I'm going to share with you. Well, this is not an exhaustive list, but just based on these verses, we're going to see what authentic disciples look like. What are the marks of authentic disciples? And it's going to be easy for you to remember, I hope. Okay? Later on, you'll see what I mean. Okay? But first of all, authentic disciples are called by God are called by God. Why? You see that in, in verse 13. And he went up, this is Jesus, he went up uh, to the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. Jesus called them. This one passage shows us his divine sovereignty in choosing people. All right? It's his sovereign choice. Jesus calls whomever he desires. That's very clear there. It doesn't say that whom he saw was an eloquent speaker, whom he saw that has like, he's the one of the top managers of Jerusalem, or probably in the the government, or those who are rich. He didn't say that, right? God called, Jesus called, what? Called to him those whom he desired. None of those things mattered. It's good, it's not bad, especially if you're handing top position when God blesses you with money, but can I, can I just make it clear? It's not because of what you bring to the table that God chooses you. It's not because, oh, I'm, I'm holy. You know, I, I go to church every day. Sarado naman yung church, no? Sometimes we think that way. And we force ourselves, Lord, you have to accept me. You have to choose me. You know why? If you don't choose me, then you're on the losing end. <laughs> oh, we have that audacity to even think that way. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, it's not because of you. God chooses you because of His grace. Amen. Amen. And I normally tell the leaders here that God blesses this church despite of us. In spite of our limitations, in spite of our our frailties our weaknesses and it's the same thing for us authentic disciples are called by God in John 15 15 16 it says there you did not choose me but I chose you God chose you and he says there, but I chose you and appointed you so that you should bear fruit. And that fruit should abide. Brothers and sisters, you are not here because someone forced you, put a shotgun in you, uh, in front of you and say, you better attend CCF Toronto East or else. <laughs> I hope no one did that, okay? But you are here, you know why? Because God wants you to be here. Amen. 
Amen. Because God called you. God called you to hear this wonderful message that we, we have to be authentic. God wants you to be authentic. He calls you to be authentic. And you can see there in verse 14, and he appointed 12. Verse 16, he appointed the 12. They were intentionally handpicked by Jesus Christ. It's not the religious leaders. God chose them. God chose 12 ordinary men. And the Spirit of God gave us their names. And we'll go through them later. 12 ordinary men, but this man who would lead the advancement of the gospel, they would turn the world upside down. Can you just imagine that? 12 nobodies. What are their professions? Five of them are, were fishermen. You have a tax collector. The others are even unknown. They don't, you don't know what they were doing. But God chose them. And, and that reminds us this. You know, authentic disciples are those who hear the call of Jesus. Are you hearing the call of Jesus, brothers and sisters? Is there anything else greater than to be called by God to be authentic disciples of Him? Let me answer that question. I can't think of any. I can't think of anything else better than that. As I ponder it on more and more, I cannot think of anything greater than that privilege that I would serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We should have that kind of or sense of awe of the one who called you. Authentic disciples hear the call of Jesus and responds with a personal commitment. When Jesus calls, there should be a response, which brings us to the second one. Authentic disciples come to Him. Jesus calls and we are supposed to come to Him. It's amazing, you know why? Because in this just very simple verse, you see God's sovereignty in man's responsibility. It says there, and He went up on the mountain and called to Him those whom He desired. He called them. And what did they do? They they came. They came to Him. God calls and God, uh, they came to Him. God gives the invitation and the question is, brothers and sisters, will you respond? Will you respond? Uh, a lot of us here might be hearing the call of God in their lives and what do we do? And shrug it off. We'd say, especially, you know, I know this. Especially when you're younger, you would say, eh, I, I'll just follow God when I'm older. Or when I'm 40, 50, 60 years old, 70 years old. Probably I'll follow God when that time comes. But for now, I'll enjoy myself. Party, party! Yeah. <laughs> And the problem there, brothers and sisters, we, we're not even sure if this afternoon is available for us. A friend of mine, well, my cousin, she has a friend and she just died. Very young. Very young. I, I don't think she's even 40 years old. And that reminds me of the reality that this life here is temporary. That our eyes should be looking for the eternal. There's much more than this. You know? There's much more than what you have here. We're getting old. You might be proud. Oh, you're looking good. 
your body is perfect. Can I tell you something? When you grow old, you can't help it, you know? It will deteriorate. Really, that's, that's the truth. You might be strong today. Even my disciple, um, Pastor Dennis, he was saying, you know, Jeff, you have to start, you know, uh, helping yourself because when you get 40, 50, you'll see the difference. You just can't do the same things that you used to do. And that's, that's a reality. That's a reality. And so when God calls, we are to respond. We know for sure that God is calling. You know, it says there, before you can be authentic disciple, you have to answer His call. You have to answer His call. And that is a personal answer. I cannot do that for you. No one else can do that for you. It is up to you. God might be prodding your heart for a long time. And He's working. He has chosen you. He has given you everything so that you would be able to respond. And yet, you choose otherwise. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Can you say that honestly? Can you say it honestly that you know God and He knows you? Because sometimes we, we say, Oh, I know Trump. I know Trudeau. I know him. Does he know you? <laughs> That's a world of difference, right? You would say, Oh, I know God. Does He know you? Because we know that in the last days, there would be a lot of people who would call, Lord, Lord. And the response of God would say, depart from me, I don't know you. So we have to be authentic. It's not just what we say. It says there in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, let's go to the Old Testament. It says there, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, Come, buy and eat. Come. He, he keeps on saying, come. The invitation is there. Come. This is an invitation of the Lord that He has this, if you study it, it has this urgent tone and universal in school. God is calling you to come, brothers and sisters. Come home. Come home to Jesus. Do you have that deep spiritual need in your life? Are you thirsty? It goes on to say, Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. And then, look at this. It says there, Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. You know why? Because there will be a time when your time is up. There will be a time where there is judgment. And God has given you the opportunity to do that. A lot of opportunities. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. I don't know exactly what you're going through, brothers and sisters. And I may not know that, but God knows it. God knows you. As a matter of fact, He knows you more than you know yourself. Your deep longings, your struggles. And just God is saying, He's calling, look, come to me. Jesus is calling you to come to Him. All who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
What a blessing that is. What's stopping you from coming? <laughs> Might be a problem in your family, your finances, relationships, whatever the case may be, I just encourage you, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. But the most important thing there, you know what? It's not those finances, it's not those... It's your relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of the Bible, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Whose name everyone will bow down. Who will acknowledge who He is. The only one who died for your sins and for mine. The only person who can save us. The only person who can save us. You know, because what we need is that spiritual rest, brothers and sisters. Have you been in that spiritual rat race? And I, 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 or not probably spiritual rat race, but it's more on religious rat race. You know that kind of thing that the rats run off and it's just spinning? And even how, how hard they try, they still get nowhere. They're still there. You try and run. You try and do these things. You try, you try and serve. You're sincere. Can I tell you something? You can serve all you want. But if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, then you have a big problem. You won't go anywhere. And that's why I'm so thankful. Tito Ebet is making sure that we get to know the, the gospel. We get to know what is the real thing. How can you be saved? That you try and try, try and serve, do those things. Show yourself nice to people. Those are short-lived. People can fake that like, what? One month, two months, one year. If you're really good, five years. <laughs> But the truth will come out. Truth will expose who you truly are. It will expose who you truly are. And look at the, the heart of God. What is the heart of God when, when He calls us? Look at this. Who, that is God, desires all people, what? That is the desire of God. To be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So first thing that we have to ask, are you saved? You have to be sure about that. How can you be saved? You have to understand the knowledge of the truth. Because you cannot be saved without realizing sin and its consequences. You won't understand the good news if you don't understand the bad news, brothers and sisters. It has to be clear. God wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so He's inviting us to come. What's the call? What's the call for us? Look at this. In, in Mark chapter 1, just two chapters uh, from, from where we're reading. It says there, Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew and the brother of Simon casting a net into, a, into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, What? Follow me. And I will make you become fishers of men. 
follow me. And that is the call for us. That brings me to the third thing. What are the what's the first? Called by God. Authentic disciples are called by God. Second is they come to him. They follow Jesus. There are five, okay? So yeah. I guess you have an idea of what will come after that. Okay? They follow Jesus. They follow Jesus. Authentic disciples follow Him. And it says there, and immediately they left their nets and followed Him. Going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the, the net. And immediately again, he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hard hairy ones and followed him. So one by one, we see that first Jesus chose them, then he called them, and what that invitation meant was that they followed Jesus. He called them individually. And the challenge there is, come, follow me. Notice that Jesus is calling for a personal response. Personal response. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for this. Verse 14 and 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. What? Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe. Jesus wants repentance. Repentance is change of mind. It's turning away from our sins and trusting in Jesus Christ. Believing the gospel. Authentic faith, what? You know, authentic faith moves us to walk with God. Authentic faith what, does, what do I mean by that? I mean it's, it's not authentic if it does not bring you alongside with God. It's not authentic if you stay where you are. If you do not follow Him. If, if you simply say yes and stay there, well, it's fake. And that's a challenge for us. You know, these men left their boats, their nets, their tax booth, even their father. That's the cost of discipleship, brothers and sisters. And so the question that we have to ask is this. What is God asking you to leave behind? What, is there anything that God wants you to turn your back from? And it's not, you know, it's it's not necessarily your jobs. Oh, I'll just go full time. I'll be a missionary. No. Last night we were even talking with the D group. We were trying to to see how would you know whether it's faith or it's foolishness. We were talking about uh, Peter when he walked on water. But it starts there if you are his sheep, that you know his voice, and that you follow him. So you have to go back. Are you his sheep? Truly his sheep. Or napadaan ka lang? What is God asking you to leave behind? What is God asking you to turn away from? Is it sin? Is it sin that easily entangles us? That weighs us down? Brothers and sisters, it's not worth it. 
don't don't hang on to those things. Is it money? Money that just disappears, you just get sick. All of those will be gone in an instant. I tell you. Even your life, brothers and sisters. So you better know whom you will serve, whom you will follow. Mark says that they immediately follow Jesus. And so don't delay. Don't delay. Authentic disciples of Jesus follow Him immediately. Follow Him immediately. And, you know, if, if you think about it, before they met, met Christ, what was their life? Their occupation, as I mentioned? Fisherman, tax collector, and then we're not sure about Bartholomew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot, well, he's, he's like a rebel. He's working hard to overthrow Rome. But they break out of their former lives to be used by God. And they became fishers of men in that they had an impact. Not, not a small thing. Brothers and sisters, we are, we get to know God's word through them. They gave up their lives for us. So authentic disciples are called. They come and follow Him. And they are what? The authentic disciples are transformed. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a? Is it like improved? Improved version of you? No, no, no. It's a new creation. If you have put your faith in Christ, you're a new creation. There should be a transformation in your life. Authentic disciples should have radical change. It's not an improvement, but the Bible says we are new creatures. You cannot be the same. Normally, when we do premarital counseling, you know, before they get married, for all the singles out there, and even the married, you know why? What we normally tell them is, you know, when you get married, you cannot live the same way as you were when you were single. Amen. And you were saying, well, that's so obvious. True. Believe me, some of you have tried it. Okay? Yes. And their spouse don't like it. You cannot do that. In the same way, in the same way, when you, when God called you, you became a Christian. You submitted your life to, to God. You cannot live the same way as He once lived. Amen. It's just impossible. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. When you became a Christian, when God chose you and changed you, you cannot live as you once lived. There has to be transformation. And the Bible tells us it's from glory to glory. You don't become perfect. But the question there is, last year, six months ago, two years ago, are you still the same? Where God is moving and changing you, transforming you. It's renewing your mind. The problem there is, you say, oh, there's change. The problem is, it's worse. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. Change for the worse. Okay. Because when God chose us and called us and redeemed us, we're supposed to be transformed into 
Christ likeness. You know the problem with the church today? A lot of people call themselves Christians and they're not anywhere near the image of Christ. That's the sad truth. But God calls us. He wants to transform us. You know the, you know my story, right? I grew up in, well, my parents became Christians early on and I grew up in a Christian family. And I did it until first year college. I simply went through the motions. Oh, I know the the verbiage, the uh, the words. Of course, the sanctification, yeah? <laughs> justification, propitiation. You know things like that. You, you know that you you've memorized it. But I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't a Christian. My life was full of sin. My, you know, I had hatred. I had um, bondages. I was rebelling against my parents, authorities. That was my life. But when God called me out of that kind of life, first year college, there was this transformation in my life. When he opened up my eyes to the truth, you know, I realized that I needed a savior. I, I needed, I can't save myself. And I'm not a Christian because my parents were Christians. Doesn't make me a Christian. Doesn't make me a Christian because I go to church. I realized that I am a Christian because I need a personal relationship with the Savior. And the same thing for all of us. And the transformation that God made in my life is that, you know, my mouth was full of profanity then. Even unbelievers were stumbled. Would you believe that? <laughs> really? But God changed that and allowed me to even, what? That when I open up my mouth, that I would be able to sing for God. Later on, that I would be able to preach God's word. What a transformation. It's not because of me. It's because of the power of God, His mercy and His grace in my life. And that is available for you. You wouldn't believe it. Before, I used my hand to pick fights with people. a certain degree, they didn't want me they, they want to kick me out of the school. And I tried to manage it and I said, my, I don't like to go to this school. But the truth is they wanted to, to, to talk to my mom, you know. But I had to, well, let's just transfer there. I think that school is better. You know, those things. I was notorious. Yeah. But God changed me and used my clenched fist. He opened that up. That I would be able to praise God. That I would be able to comfort others. That is how God transforms our lives. Again, that's available for you. For me. Don't limit God. Say, hey, my, my past is, is this. God can change lives and still doing that even today. If He can do that in my life, He can do that in the lives of this man. He can do that in your life. And authentic disciples are transformed and they are continually transformed from glory to glory to glory. And how can this happen? You can ask. How can this happen? How can this happen in my life? You know, you want to know how? How God can transform you? 
And he went up on the mountain and called them uh, to those whom he desired. And they came to him and he appointed twelve so that they might be with him. Authentic discipleship means that you have to be well, one is with your disciple and ultimately with God. If you're not spending time with Him, brothers and sisters, that's not going to last. You will not get to know Him. My question is, are you spending time with Him? Are you praying? Oh yes, I pray. Uh, probably 20 seconds before I eat. And sometimes you're even praying and you're eating at the same time. Lord, thank you. <laughs> you wouldn't know God. You wouldn't know Him if you're not spending time with Him. If you're not with Him. Amen? The first job of the disciple was simply to be with Jesus. To learn and from, from being around with Him. I don't know if you've observed that. Some people, like for example, husband and wife, after some time, they, you know, they look the same. They take the same. After some time, at least. You know, they're not totally the same, but uh, we have this word in Tagalog, makahawi. Right? Because the more time you spend with each other, you get to pick up... Uh, how they express things, how, how, how they think, how they, right? It's the same thing. The more time you spend with Jesus, you get to know His heart. And the prayer that you, you bring, and you, you, when you pray, it's no longer, you know exactly what God wants. And so when you pray and come to Him, you pray His will. You pray, you know, even if it's hard, you would say, Lord, if this is even possible, but not my will, but Yours be done. If yours be done. It might be hard, but you know the heart of God when you keep on spending time with him. So that's why it's not a, it's not discipleship when you say, oh, okay, you attend a seminar, discipleship seminar. That's not discipleship, okay? That might help, but that's not discipleship. It's not discipleship when you come here on Sunday. One hour, some of you might be even sleeping. <laughs> At least I'm able to help you rest, okay? But uh, it's okay with me. Just don't snore, but okay. But but that's that's not discipleship. Discipleship is something that when they look at your life, as you spend your life or walk with God, people are looking after you. And you know what? That is real in our homes. Your children looks up to you. That is discipleship. Will, will they be safe when they follow you? Hard question, but we have to ask that ourselves. Have you been with Jesus? We will only be as useful to Jesus to the extent that we have been with Jesus. Let me say that again. We will only be as useful to Jesus to the extent that we have been with Jesus. Have you been with Jesus? Have you spent time with Him in His Word? In prayer? Lastly, empowerment is from God Himself. 
You cannot live this life as authentic believers without the help of God, without the help of the Holy Spirit. Can you hear me? You need God. Step by step, moment by moment, day by day, we are able to live out the kind of lives that God wants us to live only by His grace. Only by His grace. We receive supernatural power and that could only come from God. He who has all the power in the world is equipping you, is empowering you to be able to live an authentic life. We're familiar with this verse. The Great Commission, which is our mission as well as the church. And Jesus came to them, it says there in verse 18, Jesus came and said to them, what? All authority. What? Only here in Toronto? Or Ontario? What? Heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he gives that commission. And his promise is what? I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus calls you to make disciples. Jesus calls you to be authentic disciples. He will be with us. Talk about being empowered. Talking, of, talking about the source of real authority, of real power, of real transformation. That's Jesus. And He's giving that to you, brothers and sisters. He's giving that to you. An authentic disciple is CCFD. Yeah. but you know it's not just being part of this church it's about authentic relationship with God with Jesus Christ that is being an authentic disciple it's not just attending a church but it's being the church can you hear me? It's not just bringing people here, but it's bringing the church to them. When they see that you're different. When they see the difference between you, how you respond to criticisms, when you respond to what? To hardships. They see, wow. This is the real thing. This is the real thing. My prayer is that we will be the real thing. That we will be genuine. We are called by Jesus. Then we come and respond to His calling and follow Him. Not setting our own rules, but obeying Him in every command. An authentic follower is someone who is what, transformed and empowered by God. That is authentic disciples of Jesus Christ. L let me end with this. Just a few more minutes. Put on the Bible. I want us to, to see the 12 names there are given to us. It says there, he appointed 12 Simon, okay, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, John. Who is Simon? Who is Simon? Peter. <laughs> You're right. Okay. The one who denied him. 
just imagine that this God knows that Jesus knew that from the very beginning the one who he died in. he's someone who always speaks out what he thinks and a lot of time because of that he gets into trouble even in one of the times he even rebuked Christ for pursuing the cross. Can you just imagine? Lord Jesus, I rebuke you. <laughs> wow. Man, this heavy stuff that you're having there. This is the guy who did that. At one point, Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? What? He, he said, you are the Christ. On the same day, he was called, Get thee behind me, Satan. The best and the worst day of your life, I guess. Imperfect person. Who's James and John? Very good. Very good. I was looking for a deeper answer. They're brothers. And they were given this nickname. Huh? Sons of Thunder. That's not a superhero thing, okay? Sons of Thunder, why? Because they're short-tempered. Judgmental brothers who wanted to call fire from heaven and destroy a Samaritan village. Why? Because they didn't accept them. They were saying, Oh Lord, you want us to pray and uh, call fire from heaven? Destroy this? Oh, praise God. He didn't answer their prayer. But these are these men. They were insensitive. You know why? Because when Jesus was telling them, you know, that he's about to die, what he's about to go through, they were arguing with themselves. You know what they were arguing? Who will sit with, Lord, who will sit the, in your right hand and your, your left? Can you just imagine that? Someone would come to you, you know, um, I just came from the doctor and I'm about to die. Oh, can I have your car? <laughs> You're not going to leave that anywhere. Can I have your house as well? They were insensitive. A lot of times they missed the point. They didn't get what Jesus Christ was teaching them. Thomas. Oh, wala na kayo makita dyan. Who's Thomas? He's known to be the doubting Thomas. He doubted. Well, this is a tricky question. How about the others? What do you know about Bartholomew? James, the son of Alphaeus. Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot. They're not even known that much. What does that say? These are the people who were, well, imperfect people, but at the same time, God chose them. You know why? Because there are a lot of people, you know, yesterday, I'm just reminded of this. There are people who just work hard to make our place a beautiful place for us to have. They clean this up. And there are things that you do as a follower of Jesus Christ that won't even get noticed. These people were known, but their reward is in heaven. That's what it's saying. Your reward is in heaven. 
and probably a note to new believers or even to the old believers. Reminder for all of us. You know, authentic disciples are not perfect. They're not perfect. Authentic disciples, they serve with pure hearts, the master, but they make mistakes. These 12 were far from perfect. They have their high points and low points in their lives. But as I think about it, they're just like you and me. They're just like you and me. And yet, they impact the world. Brothers and sisters, the challenge here is this. Will you be an authentic follower of Jesus Christ? Despite our weaknesses, despite our shortcomings, will you come to Him? Will you allow yourself to be uh, to follow and to be transformed and to be empowered. He's calling us. He's calling us. The question is, what's your excuse? What's your excuse? Will you be His authentic disciple? Brothers and sisters. God is calling you. Will you come? Will you follow Him? Will you submit yourself to Him and transform you? Just like these disciples. What a privilege that is to be used by God in making Him known, in discipling other people. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank you, God, for your reminder for us. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, Lord, that we cannot save ourselves, Lord God. You are the one who calls, Lord. But, Father, you also are the one who allows us to be able to respond. That we can come. Father, we pray, Lord God, that we just don't shrug it off. We pray, Lord, that we just don't take this for granted. That we don't take your goodness, your grace for granted. But rather, our response will be to come, to follow you, Lord. To allow ourselves to be transformed and be empowered, Lord. So that we can preach your word. So that we can reach out to our friends, our to those whom we love, our family, our relatives, Lord, so that they may get to know you as well. In our prayer, Lord God, is that as we become your authentic disciples, Lord, that they too, Lord, will get to know you. Not just a profession of faith, but rather living it out, Lord. Spending time with you. Getting to know you, Lord. Submitting to you. Following you, Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you would bless everyone here. Our prayer, Lord God, is that CCF will be a church of authentic disciples of Jesus Christ. In that through us, Lord, you will impact the world. You will impact Toronto. You will impact the lives of those people around us that they will be drawn to you, Lord. That their eyes will be uh, focused on you. That our families, Lord God, will be won over. Yes. 
Lord, it's, it's not easy. We know. But at the same time, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you, Lord. And you are the one who commands us, who commissions us, Lord, to go and make disciples of all nations. And your promise that you will always be with us even to the very end of the age. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer. In the most powerful name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior, all of God's people will say, Amen. 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 God bless you.